Uh, the Labour Party, though, still can't quite make up their minds on whether to call for a ceasefire. A third of Labour MPs, including 15 front benches, are saying uh, the fighting should stop. Contrary to their leader, Sir Keir's wishes, who, of course, uh, made a speech at Chatham House just the other day to say this was not the time to call for a ceasefire. But he does still seem a little bit confused. A lot of people, when he came out of that speech, uh, jostled him and started shouting at him, calling him a war criminal. And they're the ones who are on his side, for heaven's sake. So joining me to talk about this uh, and today's other big news is a columnist for The Sun and The Sunday Times, of course, the one and only uh, Rod Liddell. Rod, a very good um, afternoon to you. Um, so Keir Starmer doing, continues to uh, flummox us, continues to convince us that he, he means one thing when he says another. Well, yeah, except I think I've got to do a public apology to him because I did suggest in The Sun last week um, that I suspected he would shift his position very, very quickly, yes. given the amount of seats uh, which are Muslim uh, majority and or, or where Muslims are the crucial vote in this country, and given the uh, obnoxious behaviour of the far left in his party and the stance of most political activists within the Labour Party, uh, of whom 9%, 9% have sympathy with Israel. Uh, I thought he would have shifted by now, but to his enormous credit, he hasn't done yet. Mm. Um, my guess is it will still happen, but so far, uh, I'm sorry, Sakir, uh, you, you haven't moved. You, you've been very principled. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, that is to his credit, Mike, you know, whatever else we might think about him. I don't, uh, one of the reasons, other than the, the Muslim reason and the activist reason I thought he would shift his position, is that I have yet to see a subject on which he hasn't shifted his position by 180 degrees. I mean, I, I can't think of anything that he's, <laughs> that he's, that he's been uh, consistent about. But he has so far been consistent about this. Yeah, no, I mean, I even was, was, was willing to give him credit for the speech when he made it because I thought he did the right thing. And I was worried yeah. that he would, like you, uh, sort of crumble in the face of uh, a huge number of votes that might disappear from the Labour Party kind of box of tricks. But equally, yeah. uh, I think he's looked at all of the big um, Muslim um, constituencies, if you like, and the places where he's got uh, a big Muslim vote. And I was told by one of the Labour uh, sort of former advisers yesterday, those are all quite big Labour majorities anyway. So maybe he's been pragmatic and said that maybe it won't lose him actually any seats as well. But also... I no, mean... I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's that, Mike. Uh, I really don't. But because uh, there's a lot of seats where, uh, which, are, which are marginals and where the vote is decided by the Muslim vote. Uh, and that's I mean, there's about 30 of them, uh, 14 of which are currently held by the Labour Party. Mm. But then there's also seats where, you know, 50, between 40 and 50 percent of the entire electorate is Muslim, such as I think it's Birmingham Hall Green, Bradford West, Bradford East, places like that. So, you know, the, the question I suppose that, 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 that Kurt Starmer will be asking himself and asking party strategists is, where will these Muslim votes go? Uh, and uh, you will notice that we haven't heard very much from George Galloway recently, but if George were to put up his respect party in some of these seats, mm. uh, I think the Muslim, I think the Labour Muslim vote would be absolutely wiped out overnight. Yes, uh, you may well be, you may well be right. And also the thing about uh, Keir Starmer is that he hasn't forgotten the Muslim vote because this is something I find quite weird about him. You know, after having made that speech and after having talked about uh, the, the pride that Britain has in its multicultural society and all of that, he puts out a tweet late yesterday um, in which he recognises that it's Islamophobia Awareness Month, right? And he says it comes at a deeply troubling time for Britain's Muslim communities. The recent surge in Islamophobia is devastating. He's, he, he's giving a little uh, performance on video. In the performance, noticed by many people, he's wearing the same outfit that he was wearing earlier in the day, but he's removed his poppy from his lapel, <laughs> right? So, you know, um, it all comes back to the same thing. It's not a mistake. He's... Come back. Well, he's also wrong, of course. You know, uh, one of the big problems, the, the biggest problem we have in this country is the failed multicultural experiment. Yeah. That, that, is, that is it. You know, we have imported hundreds of thousands, millions of people into this country who do not remotely share our cultural values, our cultural norms. They, they have nothing in common with us. We have made no attempt to bring them into our society. We have no, no attempt either to, to help them assimilate into this country or indeed to tell them to clear off if they don't like it. We, we have imported all these people in and this is a problem 
we have made for ourselves. As Dr. Kissinger, Henry Kissinger said, you know, a few weeks ago uh, about Britain, uh, but also particularly about France and Belgium, you know, we have made a rod for our own backs. We are now terrified sometimes to walk the streets because of what we have done. And there's no argument about that. You know, I, I, the, the, the left can say, for as long as they like, you know, that the, the, the everyone has a right to come here. Well, fine, okay, but we've made this mess. We've done it ourselves, and under a Tory government, by the way. Mm. We've got the video there uh, that you can see Keir Starmer talking. I don't know if we'll be able to hear that, but um, he basically is quite blazonly and quite brazenly um, operating without a poppy. Now, I don't understand what the Labour Party advisers would be saying to him at this point, because surely they wouldn't think we didn't notice, because, I mean, it's all over Twitter now that he's, he's not wearing it, he's taken it off for this particular purpose, which tells you that he's still frightened of upsetting people. Possibly, uh, possibly. I don't think the Labour Party generally has much time for, for poppies. I don't know if you remember the last time they started wearing those white poppies. Yes, I do remember. I think that. John, I think John, the idiot, idiotic John Snow wore one once. Yes. Um, just, just as he also wore a tampon um, to, to raise awareness of tampons, uh, which is a very, very <laughs> important thing to do. I don't yes. know where he wore the tampon. I don't know if he shoved it up his nose so that the little string bit hung down. I yeah. don't know how he did it, but he, but he did pose well, with why, a tampon. Indeed. <laughs> Pardon? So well, well, you don't know how he did it or why. I mean, you know, some of the things well, that these well, people well, do. Well, no, no, I do know why, because it was International Menstruation Awareness Week or something. Okay. <laughs> that, presumably, <laughs> that's for, that would be for people who menstruate, presumably, would it? That, that would be for people who menstruate and who people like Jon Snow and Keir Starmer cannot actually define. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which I thought was a more important thing to get right before you move on to monthly yes. cycles. Well, I thought, we I thought I'd bring this to your attention because I want to talk about the Palestinian uh, marches that have been going on and the way the police have been dealing with them because there's another one coming up on Saturday. Uh, basically, uh, there's been posters... Uh, being put up all over the place saying we're going to try and get a million people to march for Palestine uh, in Trafalgar Square on Saturday. The one particular poster that I've seen uh, has a particularly ironic twist in it because uh, it says that there will be buses provided from Batley uh, in order to come down if you wish to uh, demonstrate in London. Batley, of course, being the place where a teacher is still in hiding um, after yeah. having uh, yeah. insulted the local Muslim community by talking about yeah. the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah, there is no appetite whatsoever amongst many, uh, many in our Muslim community for freedom of speech. Uh, I mean, I, I, I know a good few Muslims who, who do abide by freedom of speech. One of them, a uh, quite senior Muslim, said to me recently that he hoped that Israel kicked the hell out of Hamas um, and was disgusted by the attack uh, on October the 7th. So it's not all of them. But it nonetheless comes down to this thing that we have imported this. You know, it, it's <laughs> we have to look at ourselves and what we've done. And we've done it for reasons of political correctness and in order to prove how very tolerant we are. But we've been too tolerant. Uh, and, you know, it's been to the detriment and terror uh, of our law-abiding and extremely productive and rapidly fleeing Jewish community. Uh, and we, 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 we owe them an apology for the way that we've behaved in the last 20 and 30 years, I think. Yeah, and I think it was rather idiotic and, and at the very least lacking in foresight to see that this is where it would end up. You know, the Jewish yeah. community in this country has always been about the same size. It hasn't particularly grown exponentially. We hear every single day from anybody at the Home Office that you wish to ask that many of the people that come to this country from parts unknown or from parts of North Africa or Central Africa or uh, the Far East or indeed the Middle East come here because they have family members here. You know, we've literally yeah. built this particular scenario um, and it increases, uh, and, I, and I was not at all surprised to learn during the week that I'd been proved right again that people were coming here from Bangladesh on student visas and then seeking asylum, uh, so much so that we've yeah. now banned people from getting student visas yeah. from Bangladesh. You know, yeah. I don't know who's been running uh, the shop, but they've literally been leaving the door and the till open for everybody to come in and take what they want. They have, and, you know, I think the next election, immigration is going to be an absolutely crucial issue and when we talk about immigration, we do have to focus on this. You know, we do have to focus on the fact that we have built a rod for our own backs and indeed for the backs of uh, rather productive uh, members of our community who've lived here peaceably and have assimilated. 
Uh, and, you know, the, the, the Dutch have, have seen this problem coming, and they have a word for it, uh, which was when a, a Dutch journalist was murdered by a, an enraged jihadist, uh, which is education by death. Yes, <laughs> which is really. a rather grim way of, of talking about it, but that we are beginning to learn that what we have done is wrong by death happening. And that, that sooner or later, someone will be killed in this country, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we've seen it before. We've seen it before with terrorist attacks. But over the Gaza stuff, someone there's going to be a, a rage-filled jihadist murdering someone at some point soon. Yeah. Uh, you can bet your well, bottom Well, I mean, it happened. Right. Uh, they had an incident in Paris just the other day where a woman yeah. um, uh, was shot dead by the French police on the metro after threatening to blow herself up. So I've been quite That's surprised right. that, that something like that hasn't happened here. Um, Rod, let's just take well, they a... they wouldn't a, shoot her dead, would they? They'd probably, they'd probably give her a grant. Yeah, uh, well, that's, probably, that's, yeah. That's, and that's, that's the problem. I mean, well, when you see how the police are handling themselves in this crisis, um, uh, it is shocking to me that the police have been uh, uh, tearing down those persons oh, of... Oh, unbelievable. Well, I said, I said today, I said today this morning that the Sun have put it on the front page. You know, the thirty-two pictures of innocent children who are currently being held hostage yeah. in underground tunnels uh, underneath the streets yeah. of Gaza. Quite disgraceful and disgusting things to do. But I said to Kevin O'Sullivan, I wonder if the police are going to go around to every news agent now uh, and demand to take down every copy of the Sun uh, just in case it offends yeah, well, somebody. I I have to say this is really important, it, it, uh, but, uh, but it's it's the police behaving as they have been behaving over the last 15 to 20 years, mm. uh, which is they have become yet another one of our institutions which has become uh, idiotically woke. And I think either Rowley, Mark Rowley, gets a grip of this or he should resign. Uh, I know we're always calling for the head of the Met to resign, but that's because it's always badly run. Right. Uh, and there is absolutely no question that this is, that the behaviour of the police during these marches and and subsidiary actions as well has been catastrophically bad mm. and I, it wouldn't surprise me if jewish leaders said that they'd lost faith in the police yes. uh, at all uh, well, I, I think i think that's why many jewish people are saying we don't feel safe going into central london anymore we don't really feel safe going into large parts of london where we don't know yeah. what we're going to be up against because it looks as though the police yeah. would not in any way help them. Um, but just before no. uh, we let you go, Rod, I wanted to ask you about uh, something you wrote about on Sunday, your, your piece in the Sunday Times. Very amusing. Um, about the banning of flirting at the photocopier, ITV's latest um, uh, plan yes. to ensure that yes. they know what absolutely everybody's <laughs> up to, even when they're not at work, uh, even if it's with somebody who just delivered the sandwiches. Yeah, well, there's two things. <clears throat> the first is the, the relentless poisonous growth of human resources um, uh, departments, which are, which are now the gods of, of all of these industries. It's human resources. It's human resources which drives the increasingly woke agenda of these companies. It is, it, it's shocking. And the idea that they can actually prevent people having relationships within a company, I find odious. Uh, but it's also the butterfly's wings effect that these changes actually do have an effect on our society. If we don't meet the person we're going to end up with and mate with at work, we have to do so somewhere else. And increasingly, it seems to be that it's, you know, uh, online dating, which tends to be focused exclusively on attractiveness. So it's, it's a, it remains to be seen what will happen as a consequence of this. But it is a big shift in, in the way in which our country uh, progresses. Uh, to see one form of mating going, and the, because it's almost banned in many companies now yeah. to have a relationship with someone else, and a new one come in, and I, I don't know what effect that will have. Well, presumably all it will do is it will make people be secretive and more secretive and ever secretive and not actually tell anybody anything. Yeah, you know, I do wonder if you're allowed a quickie now and again. No, I'm uh, afraid not. That's really not? completely out of the question. Do, 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 uh, but do we you haven't have got to time. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. it's only, you know, only 10 seconds for me. I'm, I'm happy. Thank uh, you. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's an odious way to be. It is. It's so and, ridiculous. But, well, it's but, just more, it's more evidence, isn't it, Rod, that the world has gone completely mad and, and you know... Yeah, just... well, the world hasn't. We have to remember at these times that we're in a minority, you know. Uh, the, the world doesn't behave like this. It's Western Europe and America and Canada. Yes. And increasingly Australia. Yes. No, very true. It's a long way from being the world. Uh, you don't find any of this rubbish in the Visegrad countries. 
You really for don't. Example. No, no, you no. really don't. Listen, great to talk to you, Rod. We've got to run. Thank you very much. Thank indeed. You. Rod Liddle uh, there from The Sun and The Sunday Times. You